Ah, Venice. It's one of those places everyone dreams about visiting. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's rich in history. And of course it comes with a few problems because there's millions of people that go every single year, if not every single day to try to see the city. If you're planning a trip to Venice, here are a few tips to make sure that you have the best time possible. First and foremost, I think a big thing that baffles people when they go to Venice is there are literally no cars allowed on the lagoon. That means the main island of Venice is a car-free zone. So if you are driving to Venice, you have to leave your car somewhere else. If you are taking a cab, that means you are taking a boat from, say, the train station or from the airport which really throws people off because we live in a society, especially in the United States, that is so reliant on vehicles. As a result of the no car thing, you're going to take boats everywhere. That includes a bus system. It's far more affordable to get a bus pass, aka boat pass, for the city transportation than it is to take private taxis everywhere. And it's a great way to meet people and see the city. All right, let's talk gondola rides. Go to Venice, plan on spending about $100 to do a gondola ride. Go with your group, go by yourself, have an amazing time. It's one of those things that cannot be replicated anywhere and you are literally in living history. These boats go back hundreds of years. They're family, generational stories about how to be a gondolier and the men and women that do this are just so passionate and love being able to do this. These ships are handmade, or the boats rather, are handmade. They are gorgeous carved pieces. They cost about $20,000 or more to make and people spend their lives doing this great journeying around Venice to share with tourists and other people. It's a must do. I don't care how much it costs. When you're in Venice instead of Rome, you have to do the gondola rides. Um, it's just unparalleled. Maybe this is true for all of Italy, but I feel like Venice can be like a single location. You may not do any other exploring in Italy, but before you go, learn a little bit about the history and the culture and the times of the city. There is so much to know, and there's some really great books that will give you kind of a rundown on what you're looking at and just how magnificent all of these details are. Literally the entire city has been built up on this tiny little island and then built out. So it's all been fabricated and it goes back hundreds and in some areas in some ways thousands of years. So it's a really amazing place. It's unlike anywhere else I've ever been. All I have to say about when you should go is that you should go soon. Venice is literally sinking because of rising tides due to global warming, but also because of the lagoon that it sits on, Venice is constantly flooding and it's constantly wearing away at the historical landmarks and pieces that are super important to the city. That being said, be careful about knowing when you're going and what you're doing. If you're taking a cruise and specifically it's stopping in Venice, make sure you pay attention to that because there's been a movement to try to stop cruise ships from stopping in Venice and letting thousands and thousands of people out every day. This is because the city in the summer months especially is just overrun with people. And that's why I would say go in the off season, go in like September, October, November, early spring and avoid a lot of those crowds. You're going to have a much more intimate experience with the city and you're going to enjoy it that much more. In the summer it's very hot. There are thousands of people pressed all together and it's way more enjoyable to go to a city when there's less people and you have actual time to take in everything that you're seeing and enjoy it. Oh. 
Another big tip for traveling in Venice is allow extra time to get everywhere. Because everything is water-based, because there are a lot of tourists, because you're relying on boats, and it's Italy, things take a while to get places. So just make sure you allow an extra 10 or 15 minutes if you have a tour or a timed entry into one of the magnificent museums and palaces in the area. Um, otherwise, just enjoy yourself, slow down, do a little La Dolce Vita. It's a great city to just get lost in and take it all in. If you have an extra day or even an extra afternoon, get away from the Venice main island and go explore some of the other locations in the lagoon. Murano and Murano, which you're looking at, offer some amazing, not only photographic opportunities, but cultural opportunities as their locations where a lot of the glasswork and lace that Venice is so famous for have been done for centuries. There's also a lot of cultural entities there that you don't see in Venice. It's a little more of a working man's palace versus is the gaudy, rich palaces that you see on the Venice island. Each house in Verano, for instance, is painted a different color, with the idea being that fishermen would be able to find their homes easily when they're coming back from going out to sea. It's a charming, charming island, and I can't recommend it enough for a quick little escape from all of the crowds. Enjoy some seafood, take it all in, buy some souvenirs, and just have a great time. Oh